folks welcome to the last lecture on chapter 4 the seventh lecture on chapter 4 we talked yesterday uh, in the sixth lecture about the breakdown in strength of atmospheric air in diff under different conditions you remember we first discussed in the uniform field and there we established the graph practically measured theoretically verified the breakdown in strength of uh, atmospheric air in uniform field uh, could vary something like 90 kv per centimeter for very small gap of 0.1 uh, uh, 0.1 millimeter and when you increase the gap distance at 1 uh, cm it is 31 uh, kv per cm obviously and d with dc or the peak value of uh, ac value uh, uh, voltage and when you increase the gap distance further the field is rendered to be not or no more uniform because of the space charge effect and uh, larger uh, avalanches are able to take this above 2 cm of the gap uh, the space charge affects and you, then you can say the field becomes weakly non uniform and in that curve also it was something like 25 kv per cm so interestingly this uh, has been measured here as you can see in the um, in the uh, measured characteristic the first one between two spheres as you see and the distance for which it has been measured is only 0.5 meters that is 50 cm and the diameter of these spheres is also very large that is 50 cm so under this condition till up to the uh, the uh, ray, till up to uh, 50 cm gap distance or 50 cm diameter red uh, diameter spheres but the field remains weakly non uniform that can be verified and we measure as you can see it here uh, for a uh, you, we can see here very well that uh, for example 800 um, kv 800 kv has been measured for you can say uh, 0.3 yeah you can say 0.3 so uh, 0.3 uh, mm, that meters that is 30 and when you multiply uh, 30 with uh, 25 kv that will work out to be uh, 75 the 750 kv and we are measuring 800 kv very correct that in, that means the breakdown strength in weakly non uniform fields can is verified something around 25 kv per cm and more interesting thing we learnt yesterday that uh, since no partial breakdown activity takes place under this condition the uh, breakdown strength for negative as well as for positive polarities is measured to be the same of course under this condition the uh, streamer um, uh, avalanche process would uh, would lead to the breakdown but no partial breakdown before the break uh, before the complete breakdown or global breakdown across the gap because the field is weakly non uniform and no effect of polarity of the voltage uh, is there because the no partial breakdown activity precedes the global breakdown now we we'll go to the other type of electrode that is rod and plane and when we 
have a gap distance uh, of even um, maybe very small gap distance of maybe about 5 10 uh, centimeters it may be weakly non uniform field but when we increase the gap distance the field becomes extremely non uniform fields so if in both under the, both these conditions the field is weakly sorry extremely non uniform and their stable partial breakdown activity precedes the uh, global breakdown and when we measure it let's talk about with positive polarity we have learned in the lichtenberg figures the field enhancement due to the space charge built up takes place so the partial breakdown activity ex uh, extends in the gap more and therefore the breakdown strength measured is less as you could uh, as you can see here the breakdown strength measured is lower as compared to the negative polarity and in the negative polarity because of the space charge effect uh, prominently near the uh, 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 near the anode in this case the anode is negative the field enhancement is so strong there that and it does not extend in the gap so the breakdown strength of the air measured is much higher as you can see it here let's say for at uh, a, ga a gap distance of one meter as you can see at a gap distance of one meter it is something like uh, 500 uh, 500 um, uh, kV here that means the average is 5 kV per centimeter but in case of negative polarity it is 1000 it is 10 kV per centimeter just the double and that is an interesting information and knowledge that the breakdown strength uh, for negative polarity is much higher than positive polarity that means there is an effect in extremely non-uniform field configuration of the polarity of the voltage of the uh, electrode shape the um, uh, uniform field weakly non-uniform field and, ex and extremely non-uniform field effects are there and we will learn further that there is also very predominant effect when you measure the breakdown strength under any field conditions with different kind of voltages this has been measured with positive and negative polarity uh, dc if you measured with ac it will be slightly different if you measured with lightning impulse it will be different if you measured with switching impulse it will be different so you cannot say that the breakdown strength uh, of air is has a certain value yesterday again we did uh, try to analyze uh, this, this I realized later this is a si slight uh, uh, um, mistake in this graph this should be 450 this should be 5 here 450 and it is when you uh, when you look at the graph the uh, measured value at this for one meter is slightly above 400 in the graph if you see it minutely so it should have been written here 450 and you know that the average potential gradient across streamer channel is uh, defined to be 4.5 kV per centimeter so uh, for one uh, uh, meter gap distance between the rod and plane the streamer corona or streamer partial breakdown precedes the complete breakdown and the breakdown occurs when the streamer is able to extend up to the opposite electrode that means it is able to cover the distance of one meter and you measure the breakdown um, uh, voltage to be 450 that means 4.5 kV per centimeter uh, and this is the 
uh, the tangent drawn initial on the initial uh, measured characteristic. And when you uh, increase the gap distance, this 4.55 kV per centimeter would reduce. And what happens when you measure the breakdown voltage above 4 meters, the breakdown, uh, the average potential across the streamer, uh, 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 sorry, uh, in that case, stable leader breakdown or leader partial breakdown is preceded uh, the global breakdown. So the average potential gradient across the leader channel has been estimated and it is confirmed by this figure, this curve here, the uh, tangent to the curve measured characteristic here, this characteristic, the tangent 1 kV per centimeter. So it reduces from 4.5 kV per centimeter when pure streamer, that is streamer is with above critical amplification of avalanche, is covering the gap. And when the leader breakdown channel at 4, uh, 4, K, uh, 4 meters of distance, it is uh, the leader or you can say stable leader or stable is a leader corona would precede the breakdown and the potential gradient across the stable leader is 1 kV per centimeter which has been estimated by many people and that is confirmed by this measurement. Here another thing this measurement has been done by a switching impulse voltage of 60 by 2500 microsecond. 2500 microsecond is 2.5 milliseconds. So you can say that uh, the uh, there is enough time for this voltage to be between the electrodes. So uh, you can say that proper development of the type of partial breakdown takes place like in any like with any uh, not any other like with dc and ac but if you measured this characteristic with lightning impulse which has got only 50 microsecond duration you would measure much higher breakdown voltages because stable partial breakdown activity is not able to take place in the gap before the complete breakdown. So this also we learned and this has been uh, a schematic uh, mechanism with stable leader corona which takes place at long gap distance. Here when you apply the voltage there is a, there is a, 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 a streamer uh, corona begins and a streamer uh, corona uh, with the uh, 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 increase, I mean, extends and the stream of corona initially uh, when you increase the voltage there is a constriction phenomenon at the electrode and stream of channels constrict uh, give rise to a stem uh, or a stem bunch uh, discharge when you increase the voltage further the stem which is the beginning of the leader extends itself in the gap and the leader corona takes place when you increase further the leader uh, further the voltage the leader extends mind it at the tip of all leader channels whether it is taking place in the lab or it is taking place in the atmosphere there is streamer breakdown taking place this is streamer breakdown this is stream of breakdown at the tip of the leader channels. In fact, the required number of charged particles is produced by uh, more, or you can say, vigorous stream of uh, 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 discharge mechanism. And the leader channel requires very large number of charged particles, that is the uh, charge or, or current 
for that current is developed by ionization at the tip of the leader from the gap uh, from the air um, in the gap itself so and when the leader and stream up uh, uh, mind it it is the leader extending having at the tip only the stream up when it extends almost to the opposite electrode the complete breakdown here this takes uh, place with instable leader followed by an arc arc is a totally conductive channel which uh, evacuates the current from the source which evacuates the charge from the source or the current from the source charge when i mm, said i mean from the clouds and if it is taking place by applying a voltage from that source the current would be drawn very high current in the arc would be drawn i hope i have summarized what we discussed in the last lecture and you are able to appreciate it better you must if you have any confusion you must learn from the book so this is a, a typical photograph again taken by lemke he was my colleague and he is a wonderful person did wonderful work uh the first is the stable leader corona the first uh, of, uh picture here this is a picture uh, is the stable leader corona in a gap and this has been measured a breakdown in 7 meter gap distance in air 7 meter something like 21 feet of gap distance in the laboratory that it is perhaps if you have not seen a high voltage laboratory it is unbelievable what happens there you are given a uh, given plugs to plug your uh, ears because the sound produced is so loud you remember the sound produced for stable leader corona is nothing but like cracking sound and when the you increase the voltage further the breakdown takes place on the right side breakdown takes place with instable leader bridging the gap followed by an arc and the sound at the time of breakdown is also very very large very very loud very very loud the sound takes place so this is i wish i could show you all these things in the laboratory it's a very interesting phenomenon yeah uh when we talk uh, about the streama and the stem the top figure here reflects the stem here and below there the streama is taking place or you can say a uh, stem is the beginning of leader leader and at the tip of the leader the streama corona taking place at the uh, electrode in fact the same thing happens in the atmosphere when lightning breakdown in very long gap distances takes place as you see it here what are these two photographs the top one is an inverted tree when the tree has lost all its leaves so that is uh, like a stem bunch uh, discharge process in the laboratory and mind it the weak leader channels and that uh, and the streamer channels do not intersect each other the same thing you would observe when you see a tree without leaves the branches don't intersect each other they are all spread 
but don't inter intersect each other. And on the bottom, a, 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 um, a shadow of the such a tree without leaves is on the floor or on the road has been uh, taken here. As you, you can see, this is uh, this could be also put to be inverted. You can say this is the leader, the stem of the trees. You can say leader channel. Then weaker leader channels are formed, and at the tip of all the weaker leader channels, there is streamer breakdown mechanism. So this is the nature. The electrical phenomenon takes place as the tree grows, the nature. Yeah. In just a minute, I thought there is another, another. Yeah. Now we can, uh, we can discuss, uh, we would leave behind the breakdown mechanism or breakdown in atmospheric air, we would like to continue for a few minutes uh, breakdown in vacuum. Vacuum is also electrical insulator. And in fact, it is much, much better electrical insulating properties it has than atmospheric air. You would say, why? In vacuum, when you evacuate the air in vacuum, the mean free path of an electron would be very, very large. I hope you understand what is mean free path of an electron. Mean free path is the distance which is uh, which the electron travels without making an, a successful collusion or a successful ionization. So mean free path in vacuum because of the lesser number of molecules available in the, uh, in the chamber in, under vacuum conditions or you could say you make a vacuum out of air. So the lesser number of charge part and lesser number of molecules are available in the insulator there. So the electron would travel long distance without making an impact ionization. What can be done to achieve ionization? We have learned in gaseous dielectrics, it is the initial uh, Phenomenon is nothing but ionization and ionization develops in the form of avalanche depending upon the gap distance etc. The avalanche may be below critical, may be above critical and it is the vigorous ionization process, number of millions of avalanches taking place which are needed for the required current in the breakdown channel. So the vigorous ionization process in the uh, developed in the form of avalanche process is would lack in vacuum because of the availability of less number of molecules in the gap. Now what would you require to produce the required number of charged particles in the gap for achieving the breakdown? Obviously, you can achieve it. We learn how only by increasing the voltage. And when you increase the voltage, that means you are measuring much higher breakdown strength. That is how the breakdown strength of vacuum is very, very high. But it is slightly difficult to uh, understand. People kept working on vacuum for centuries, I must say, centuries. 
and not finding exact uh, cause uh, how the uh, how the ionization process and the avalanche process and the breakdown process develops in the vacuum people thought the you might have learned in physics the short key barrier that means the or, or the field emission from the cathode that means electrons are emitted from the cathode under the influence of very very high electric field the electric field needed for the uh, for that condition that the, you can uh, get electrons emitted from the cathode material was uh, was very very high and when people measure the breakdown breakdown could occur at lower voltages the field emission uh, theory short key barrier continued for very long time but it was in uh, middle of the last century uh, a little in the second half of the last century it was latham who said the required charged particles in the gap are not just from the uh, cathode but there are some other phenomenon or other processes by which the charged particles are uh, present in the vacuum i mean by, by which the molecules are you can say first molecule and molecules become charged particles by ionization process the availability of molecules in the vacuum there is some other source what latham said that uh, a phenomenon was observed in vacuum that the oxidation process in vacuum takes place very fast very quickly unlike in uh, atmospheric air so when you produce vacuum and there is a very small uh, uh, um, h2o I mean, uh, vapor uh, available there the oxidation process the porous oxide layers uh, of h2o and hydrocarbon adsorbates is formed very fast they become one of the source of on the surface of the electrode they become one of the source of molecules available the oxide layer the semiconductive oxide layer becomes one of the source of uh, molecules in the gap the which as you see on the first uh, um dot here first bullet here the source location of micro discharges are enlisted below there so micro discharges from the cathode takes place and the source or the location where the micro discharges take place on applying the high electric field are semiconductive surface oxides as i mentioned just now so and oxide layers are formed very fast under vacuum conditions then there is impurity concentrations such as adsorbates of dust etc on the electrode cathode let's say adsorbates we call it to be then there is availability of organic organic vapor what is organic vapor when you create vacuum in a vessel you must seal it with o-rings o-rings rubber o-rings 
and rubber o-rings is nothing but organic material and that gives rise to organic vapor you when you use the vacuum pump you have oil in it you put grease for sealing purpose grease oil o-rings they are all organic materials and when you create a vacuum under this condition with the help of a uh, vacuum pump putting in the vessel o-rings grease uh, there is some organic vapor in the vessel uh, under vacuum conditions also and they become the source of sources or the molecules in the gap and when an electron is uh, uh, ascertained on the uh, cathode which gives rise because of micro discharges at the cathode could be because of micro protrusion micro uh, layer form because of oxidation which is semiconductor the process of ionization begins and that develops in the form of avalanche as we have already learned in case of gaseous dielectrics and that is how the you can say charged particles are produced within the vacuum obviously for uh, under in this case of vacuum you may have to apply or you will have to apply very large voltage to achieve ionization process to begin and develop in the form of avalanche and vigorous ionization has to take place for uh, uh, for producing the required number of charged particles which is essential for breakdown to be achieved and that is how the breakdown in vacuum is achieved you will see here the two interesting um, figures i have put the pre breakdown conduction currents and breakdown voltages measured with ac power frequency on needle and hemispherical rod plane surface gap the uh, the figure on the left uh, you see uh, it has been measured the magnitude of the pre breakdown conduction current in micro uh, amperes with increasing gap uh, with increasing uh, gap distance and the application no sorry no increasing gap distance for the same gap distance d is constant 10 mm here what is changing i'll uh, explain and for increasing voltage the uh, pre breakdown current in the gap is measured in vacuum conditions and the vacuum here here is 7.5 uh, into 10 to the power of minus 6 tor hmm? that is uh, uh, at uh, 1.0 milli pascal or 7.5 10 to the power of minus 6 tor is the vacuum uh, pressure and uh, here interesting thing is as you see the radius of the uh, anode is here 0.02 mm that means it's a needle electrode in the second curve the radius of the needle is 1 mm that is also needle but in the third case the needle has been replaced by uh, by a hemispherical rod having radius of 19 mm as you see in all the when you see the three curves together 
the rod electrode measures the same magnitude of current but at much higher voltage much higher voltage as you can see here at much higher voltage and the uh, sharp needle having radius of 0 0.02 millimeter is able to measure the same magnitude of the current at much lower voltage of the order of 30 kV AC peak and this is um, more than three times uh, the AC peak in the case of rod. I hope you are able to appreciate why should it happen. It happens because the sharper is the electrode that is the needle the field intensity at the tip of the electrode is much higher. So you what do you and when you increase the tip radius to 90 millimeter that means that you put a rod there the field intensity is lower and in that case you uh, require more voltage magnitude to get the same field intensity at the anode. So, uh, the, uh, you can say the uh, pre-breakdown conduction current in the vacuum depend upon uh, like in any, any other dielectric magnitude of the field intensity applied and uh, the pattern of the grow, growth of the pre-breakdown current is the same in, uh, under, the, under the conditions, the pattern uh, the, ri uh, the rise in a pre breakdown current is the same, but you need higher voltage for rod and uh, plain electrode. And when you, when you measure here the in the second one and the B uh, figure B here, AC peak breakdown voltage for the same electrode system with a uh, increasing gap distance. Now, instead of the pre-breakdown conduction currents, the AC peak breakdown voltage has been measured here. That is also interesting. The breakdown voltage measured for a needle having radius of one millimeter, uh, uh, one millimeter radius, what Kind, which kind of field will be formed between the needle and the plane? Obviously, it, it will be an extremely non-uniform field will be formed between the needle and the plane. And when you change the anode to a 19 millimeter rod, and 19, uh, the rod having a radius of 19 millimeter hemispherical rod having a radius of 19 millimeter the uh, the field uh, the type of field formed between the uh, rod and plane would be weakly non uniform even till up to uh, uh, say 20 millimeter gap distance here, here. and the uh, break the, the uh, type of field form will be weakly non-uniform and you measure much higher voltage for breakdown under the case of weakly non-uniform field as compared to the extremely non-uniform field configuration. So what is interesting here for a gap distance of 10 millimeter as you see under the weakly non-uniform field uh, configuration you are measuring here something like 130 kV peak uh, AC peak voltage 130 kV AC peak voltage what was there for one centimeter or the same 10 millimeter gap distance in case of air it was the peak value 31 kV per centimeter and you are measuring now here under the vacuum conditions of the order of 
130 kV. So it is something like more than four times the breakdown strength uh, of vacuum is more than four times that of the air. So it is a much better insulator or it has much better insulating properties the vacuum has. Yeah, one more uh, slide I'll show you and then we can uh, conclude our uh, session. And the breakdown strength of vacuum depends strongly upon the magnitude of pressure. Obviously, the whole phenomenon de uh, is dependent on the pressure. Measured at different pressure for the same electrode system in weakly non-uniform field configuration because in any gadget it won't you avoid extremely non-uniform field configuration except in the open air. It is a weakly non-uniform field under which most of the apparatus in high voltage work with gaseous dielectrics. Our vacuum is also a gaseous dielectric you can say in one way the breakdown characteristic with AC power frequency voltage is shown here. As you see, this is the breakdown voltage with AC power frequency with increasing gap distance. See, the gap distance taken here is only just up to 3 millimeter. And the radius of the sphere which has been uh, taken for measurement is at different pressures is 25 uh, millimeter that means 2.5 centimeter that means 5 centimeter diameter spheres have been taken and this for such small gap distance of 3 millimeter obviously they are forming a weakly non-uniform field configuration and as you see here when the pressure is 3.8 10 to the power of 3 this is the characteristic for a breakdown when you increase the pressure of to 7.6 into 10 to the power of uh, 4, the breakdown characteristic is measured here. And when you make pressure of the order of 7.6 into 10 to the power of minus 5 and minus 6 toward the uh, below uh, 10 to the power of minus 5 the breakdown strength does not change in one way. So that is the uh, pressure between uh, some, something like 7.6 into 10 to the power of 4 and 10 to the power of 5 around is the pressure uh, chosen in vacuum apparatuses because lower is the pressure more uh, ceiling arrangement you may have to make in the vessel which increases the cost tremendously. So that is how the uh, breakdown voltage change uh, in vacuum. Breakdown in vacuum at different pressures measured with AC power frequency voltage in weakly non-uniform field with a sphere of 50 millimeter diameter and with increasing gap distance. So vacuum proves to be a very uh, good insulator and the vacuum technology is applied that is why in uh, uh, smaller uh, voltage circuit breakers up to 66 kV rated voltage circuit breakers utilize vacuum technology and the size of these circuit breakers is very very small and they give very good performance but to develop a vessel having such high va vacuum and not disturbed uh, over the life period the vacuum should not get disturbed over the life period is requires very high and sophisticated technology. That is why the application of vacuum 
is not uh, has not been able to develop for very high voltages up to 66 kV vacuum circuit breaker are available and develop so let's uh, just you can read uh, the summary uh, the atmospheric air with uh, which constitutes 78 percent of nitro nitrogen has fairly good electrical insulation properties the cheapest protection from high voltage is by maintaining adequate distance of clearance from the live conductors asterisk gas has uh, three times better insulating properties we learned just now that the vacuum has something like more than four times the uh, insulating properties compared to air field dependent investigation of the breakdown process in atmospheric air has been made very extensively as it is most simple compared to experiment with any other dielectric any other gaseous dielectric it reveals increasingly yeah, sorry it reveals interestingly <coughs> that the basic mechanisms leading to <coughs> breakdown such as <coughs> sorry uh, ionization <coughs> you can read it yourself avalanche process and streamer process leader process are quite similar in all the dielectrics that you will realize actually these are similar even in the case of liquid and solid dielectrics we will learn further later and in the beginning with uh, properties of the gaseous dielectrics the process of generation of charge carriers and these and development of breakdown mechanism under uh, different field conditions are discussed here in this chapter four actual breakdown characteristic measured under different conditions are given so far it is possible since these compare the breakdown strength of different dielectrics in a better way real measurements uh, uh, characteristics have been uh, given as we have discussed even today a number of them and researchers have found remarkable analogy in the development of breakdown mechanism between all the three types of dielectrics that is gaseous liquid and solids the liquid and solids we'll be learning next so thank you very much for today